we were, you know, outnumbered by all of his minders in the room. So there was a sense that we were, you know, we were not on um, neutral ground in a sense. Well, Look, you've, you've spent well, so much thing, on this time. Just, Otherwise, I'm going to walk out. Okay. Jolo. Thank you. Oh, no, no, Thank can you. I just ask you about Jolo? Because no, 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 it no. is important. No, no, no. no, 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 no. It is. Uh, why do you You're think he... Back to no, 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 why? No, 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 just... The 25-minute video called Malaysia Najib Speaks is a, it's, it's truly a compelling interview. But how did the whole thing come to be at the first place? Well, uh, we asked for the interview, basically. I'd, I'd been talking to um, Mr Najib's um, media advisors for about five or six weeks, maybe prior to the interview, and they always expressed an interest in it. Um, we talked about what the interview would cover. Um, we met finally with them, and then the interview went ahead. So it was a long process, but um, right from the very beginning, it seemed like it was going to be possible. Were there any moments during the interview where you felt nervous or intimidated by him? I felt frustrated sometimes, but not intimidated by him. Mind you, mind you, they were, you know, outnumbered by all of his minders in the room. We did it in the UMNO headquarters. So there was a sense that we were, you know, we were not on um, neutral ground in a sense. You mentioned that you were frustrated. Uh, why so? Because I just felt as though a lot of the time uh, the, the former Prime Minister was suggesting that he didn't know about things and, and putting the blame onto other people um, rather than taking the blame himself or he didn't seem to have answers to the questions that I was raising, things that were had been you know, fully um, detailed in the Department of Justice report. Um, so I, I had actually expected him to have had um, more detailed answers to my question. It's not just sort of being vague about having received a gift or having, you know, um, not knowing where money came from. I, I actually thought that he would have um, come back with, with clearer answers um, in response to the Department of Justice report. Now, the former Prime Minister has defended his walkout after hearing about your award. He said you were obsessed with the Altantuya case, fed with misleading information, and even called you another victim of political propaganda. What's your response to that? This 1MDB is being investigated by more than six countries around the world. Charges are being laid. Um, in fact, obviously the Prime Minister is being charged in Malaysia. This is not propaganda. It has actually, you know, there are very detailed um, reports around the world about this. So um, I think that's just a ridiculous statement. Um, with regard to Alton Tuya, I'm not obsessed with Alton Tuya. I'm a journalist trying to do my job in the sense that there are so many questions about the murder of Alton Tuya. And also, you know, you have Cyril in Australia. He was sending text messages back to uh, Malaysia prior to being um, detained in Villawood Detention Centre, basically wanting $3 million to not bring down the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister needs to answer these questions in order to clear up um, the allegations surrounding his involvement in Alton Tuya's murder. It's not an obsession, it's just the fact that these questions are still unanswered and need to be answered. What was your reaction when he was like, I'm done, I want, I'm, I want to get out? I wanted him to stay. And, you know, obviously he wanted to talk about the economy, which was fine, but we couldn't get to that until we'd answered the other question. Yeah, there were so many questions. I still got heaps of questions I didn't ask, obviously, because the interview does go in areas that you may not have anticipated. But um, yeah, that was my big that was my big concern that there were there were major things I hadn't asked him properly about that, and he was going to leave. So, you know, Najib has apologised previously for losing his cool and promised to do another interview with Al Jazeera. Do you think you'll be taking him up on that offer in the near future? Look, it would be great to do another interview with him. We'd love to talk to his wife, Rosma Mansour, as well, um, because obviously she's implicated in um, corruption in Malaysia and facing her own charges. We, you know, we think it would be really important to talk to her as well. And obviously, you know, people in Malaysia believe that she played a critical role um, 
as the Prime Minister's wife and so to talk to her and to talk to him again would be, we'd certainly, we'd certainly love to do that. Why did you have me deported from Good this thing. country? We deported you. You're a nuisance. Because as far as I'm concerned, making lies, fabricating lies, is not something that we want to tolerate. I was actually seeking an interview with you. I'm